Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mundley. Before we jump into today's presentation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly, uh, with respect to today's presentation, uh, the views, information, opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university. I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading or probably more appropriately, day gambling the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. And most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades. So I know if I focus on excellence and education, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through managed accounts, service delivering again annual positive returns. I'm currently re responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to technical clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos, and they're shared through the Ticknell TradingView account. I also run Ticknell's rapidly growing e-mini strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the S&P 500, giving my bias for the day ahead, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the markets. These pre-market plans have delivered over 2,900 points of profit since the group launched last April. Second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Ticknell Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash session where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Let's jump into the charts again. This week, we're gonna use these four hour charts and we're gonna look at very specific trading levels that I'm tracking for the coming sessions ahead. 
So the S&P 500, last week we were looking for an upside advance. We were looking to test into the uh, 4033, which is the equality objective. We got that test yesterday. Now we have this ascending trend line resistance, <coughs> excuse me, at 4050. We have the weekly R1 at 4048. So coming into today's session, I'm looking for any pop up into this area whilst we maintain uh, negative bearish divergence uh, using the momentum study here, I'll be looking for be uh, bearish reversal patterns, initially targeting move back down into the 39.68, which is the value area high. If we can get through there, the next objective will be down into the weekly pivot, 39.36. And ultimately what I'm anticipating is that we retest trend channel support and the high volume uh, back down into the 37.70s. The alternative scenario is we break out through this resistance at 4060. If that's the case, then we look for a move up to test the 4100 as the next upside objective. NASDAQ, similar setup here with the NASDAQ. I'm looking now for any uh, corrective moves here. Let's just draw this in. So if you think about a three wave correction here, and then a move up into the 12,801, which again is that uh, weekly R1. We've got the trend, ascending trend channel resistance coming in there. We've got daily projected range resistance. So I've been looking for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, certainly thinking about the move back down into the midpoint of the channel here at, and the high, sorry, the value area high uh, coming in 12,240 as the, down, the initial downside objective on that move. YM on the Dow Jones, again, similar setup developing here on all of these indexes, really. We're looking for a pop into the resistance zone at uh, 32,430. Got daily projected range resistance above, got the weekly pivot there, and that projected ascending trend line resistance. Watch the bearish reversal patterns in there. First target is down into daily projected range support and the value area high at 31,750. The Russell, uh, Russell, this is the trade we were looking at last week. It's still running nicely. So if you're in this trade now, certainly you want to stop to entry and let this play out into the target zone. Uh, let's, let's bring in some. Uh, some trend channels here and get an idea of where we can be heading. So this is going to bear with me. There we go. So let's clone that up and get. So we're actually sitting right at the resistance area here. We've broken it in terms of the initial leg there. So we can hold this position now, it's risk-free, and we look for the target to be achieved at 18.64 on the upside. And that, uh, we've taken out the equality objective there already. So yeah, 18.64 remains the target on that position if you are in it. DAX, this one I posted yesterday, looking for an upside extension here in the DAX to target the gap fill. Uh, which is 13,789. At this stage, it would really take a close back through 13,000 to suggest that the upside is done for now. And then we'll be looking to move back into this uh, high, value, <laughs> high volume area at 12,829 and see if the bulls step back in from there. Nikkei, uh, nothing for me to do in the Nikkei at the moment. Let's move to the dollar index and see where we are. So the dollar testing that trend line support that we talked about last week, getting a nice bullish reaction here. So any break of the trend line resistance, 107.16, I think that could set a base there for the dollar to make one more move up to push towards the 110 area. But we'll have to see if we can get that closed through the trend line resistance before looking to engage on the long side. Similar, it's similarly, in the euro here, we're sitting right at trendline support. We were looking last week for that test of the 103.60, 103.50. Didn't have the strength even to get up there. So any close back through 109.30s, uh, we should be retesting in pretty short order. The Sorry, not 109.30s. Any close back through 1009, uh, 1009. 
60 sets up a move back to test this vo <coughs> high vol volume area at the 10020 and more likely than not we take out the prior lows and we look for a test down into that 98 area and then from there i'll be watching on the daily time frame for bullish divergence and bullish reversal patterns as a potential for a uh, more meaningful correction to develop Sterling sitting right at that trend line resistance. So we had this long trade last week. It traded to the profit target there, uh, giving 280 pips of upside, now getting a nice rejection here. So let's just remove these drawings and give ourselves a potential entry point here. So it could be now that we have seen the correction complete here. And certainly any break of the trend channel support back through 120.10, I would anticipate we're heading down for a look uh, to retest the prior lows here at the 117.60. And then on the daily time frame, I have a downside target of 115. At this stage, we really need to trade back above the high volume node, 122.70, to suggest we have a more meaningful low in place. Dolly Yen. So we've got a double correction developing here. So when I'm talking about a double correction, what I mean is we have an A, B, C, and we have uh, an X, Y. And we'd be looking for something like this to play out and into the equality objective, the WXY equality objective would be 133.70. We also have the value area low there. So from there, be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for that 140 as the next upside objective for the dollar yen. Euro yen breaking down and weighing on the euro. So we have a downside target now, 134.98 is the area I'm going to pay close attention to because that then could complete the broader corrective move. And so again, we're talking about a WXY pattern here. Uh, let me draw this in. So we have WX and then we, our Y would complete here at that just below 135. To pay close attention to how we trade there, bullish reversal patterns, and I'll be looking to engage on the long side in terms of the dollar yen, uh, sorry, euro yen, sterling yen, similar setup. We didn't quite meet our target zone for the short trade uh, last week. So now we're looking at uh, downside equality objective. So we have this initial leg to the downside, and then we have our corrective high there. So we're looking for a test now of 159.18 on the downside. So the opportunity for me here would be any break of this trend line support here. So you can get close through there. That's an opportunity to engage on the short side, looking for that move down into that 159 target zone on the downside. Aussie yen <coughs> fell out of its channel. So again, a bunch of these yens now have some decent corrective setups uh, developing. This should also see some weight added to the equity indexes uh, if we start to roll over here. So in terms of the downside target now, as we take out trend channel support here, we're looking for a test of 90, 30 on the downside. And again, double corrective patterns. So we don't expect it to just fall in a straight line. What we'll be looking for is another leg like so. And then we look to engage on the long side again in terms of the Aussie yen. CAD yen. Again, is sitting, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. We are sitting right at this uh, trend line support. So if we take out this trend line support and this high volume, uh, high vo <coughs> sorry, high volume mode, then the next downside objective is going to be a test of the value area low, 104.10 and that equality objective. So any close through 105.30s is an opportunity on the short side, targeting a move down. Next objective, 104.10 in terms of CAD yen. Dollar CAD, nothing to do there. Aussie has a decent setup developing here, close to this one earlier today. So any move into 69.30s, high volume mode just below at 6,900. Watch for bullish reversal patterns here. We want to engage on the long side and we're targeting an equality objective versus this swing structure here, which gives us the upside target of 71 cents. So this is going to be a key test now uh, for this Aussie yen. If we get a reversal there, then I'm going to be in on the long side. Kiwi yen, this was a trade from last week that I gave and uh, certainly risk-free now. Any pullback into the trend channel 
uh, an opportunity to engage again on the long side. We have that target on the upside at 64.30s. At this stage, it would take a loss of this pivot here at 61.90 to suggest we have a more meaningful high in place. And then we'll be looking for a move back down into the uh, price cycle lows at the 60.60 level. Gold, again, trade given last week, working really nicely, uh, up about $50 at the moment. And so what I'm looking for here is an opportunity to add to long positions, or potentially we could get a counter trend short here. So we're right at the trend channel. So any pullback now into this trend line support, 1720, I would be looking for bullish reversal patterns to add to my long positions. And the next upside objective then becomes the top side of the trend channel, 1780s. So the long position working nicely. Crude oil, nothing for me to do there. We have taken out trend line resistance, no clear pattern for me at this stage. Let's take a look at silver actually. Silver, what I've been looking for here now is a inverse head and shoulder. So this is our left shoulder. This area here is our head. Then we're going to look for this scenario to play out. So as we hold resistance here, we look for a corrective move to test now into 1870. From there, we want to engage on the long side. And we've certainly been thinking about a move up into monthly projected range resistance at $20.40. So pay close attention to any test into that 1870 area, especially if gold pulls back as well. Uh, but I like both of these, uh, these metals at the moment. And let's take a look at Bitcoin. Still trying to build a base here. My bigger concern though with Bitcoin at this moment in time is that we are replicating this phase of price action here. And I'm really not looking to engage in terms of building a position in Bitcoin. Uh, ahead of that 12,200 area, which is that long-term daily target that we have. But you can see here, this scenario is being uh, potentially replicated in the price action we're seeing down here. So I'm not a buyer of Bitcoin at this stage. Uh, I think we still need to test that daily downside objective. I believe it's 12,185 before I would be looking on the long side. I'm gonna finish up with a opportunity I'm watching here in Sterling CAD. I'm looking for pullback into trend channel support here at the 154.70s. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side. We're targeting this trend line resistance that comes in 57.39. And then from there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, targeting move back down into the high volume mode at 154.90s. And that's the whistle stop tour of the charts that I'm tracking this week, guys, and the opportunities I see developing. I'm paying very close attention to these equities in this in today and tomorrow's session, as I think we're reaching a point of potential exhaustion here, and we could be looking for another move to the downside. Equally, the dollar, if we can get through that 107, I like dollar strength, euro weakness, sterling weakness uh, is, uh, is another player that I'm monitoring closely and I'm obviously the metals, gold and silver, holding gold longs uh, and looking to add to those. Are there any questions? If you don't have a question, uh, typing an N in the chat box is helpful. Or if you have a chart you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered, uh, happy to do that. You can just type it in. I'll put the, uh, the Facebook group link in there. You just uh, request access. And you get access to my daily trade plan for the S&P 500. And the other thing I will post for you is the Sitmill Trading View account for those who are interested in following along with my daily trade setups. That is posted in there for you also. Can't see any questions coming through, guys. So. I'm going to wrap this session up here. Um, as always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.